All right, it looks like all the attendees are rolling in. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, get started with today. So once again, thanks everybody for attending our Let's Talk recruiting series. I think we are in our fourth week and been going really good so far. Got a lot of attendees signing up for this event to really get into the nitty gritty of recruiting. And our topic of the day is resources that will make you a better recruiter. And we have members of our groups from across the country. And what we'll do is we're going to sort of do a round robin and have a conversation around uh, different items that the panelists want to talk to. If you are in as an attendee, you obviously are in listen mode only, but I will be checking for the chat. So if you have any questions or comments, please add them to the chat and I'll get to them as best I can. And panelists, sometimes I get lost in the conversation. So if you keep an eye on it too, that would be much appreciated. So today we have Lisa, and tell me if I'm getting this right, Russell, am I saying your name correctly? You are. Excellent. Out of Chicago. Susan Ross, out of Atlanta. Eric Miller out of New York City, and uh, we have a late replacement. We have Marvin Smith. He should be joining us here in this, uh, hopefully in the session today. He was sort of a late ad. We had one panelist who had to go deal with the manager. I think we all know how that goes. So let's jump right into it. And Lisa, I'm going to sort of go to you first to have you bring up the first item. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Sean. And um Hello, everybody from around the U.S. So, um, again, I'm Lisa. I'm based in Chicago. I've been recruiting for over 13 years, started off in IT, and then um, it was an agency recruiting, mostly recruiting engineers. Uh, about a year ago, I moved over to the corporate side. So I'm now within the consulting arena with a firm called Centric Consulting. So a lot of project management recruiting, a lot of um, management and technology consulting. Uh, we like to find folks from our, a lot of our competitors that have been in the industry. So um, today I thought, you know, we can um, all agree that there's a ton of resources out there that would make us better at our jobs. Um, but the one I wanted to focus on today was the importance of having a social media strategy as a piece of our uh, resources in our toolbox to help um, with a couple things, you know, automating job postings or posts in general, um, as well as just generating content to build our employer brand. So I joined Centric a year ago. And when I did, I was tasked with asking to define our recruiting strategy and further build that out. So a key part of that was uh, focusing on our um, local brand and increasing that in Chicago via social media marketing. So um, we've done a couple things, actually including creating job posting templates. But when it comes to pushing out content on social media channels, we had a couple challenges um, with that. One of them was first, we wanted to make sure the content that we were putting out was in line with our brand that we were trying to, uh, to build. Um, another challenge was we are as recruiters and our team getting pulled into different directions throughout the day. So just keeping track of managing um, the post and make sure we were getting to it. So um, ultimately, we selected Hootsuite to do that. Many of you on this call might be familiar with Hootsuite or already using it, which is great. Uh, but it's really helped to solve a lot of our challenges here um, with postings. So um, we have the paid plan or one of the paid plans. Um, for those of you that aren't using it and want to start out, there is a free plan where I think you can connect up to five of your social media profiles at once. So most of us just use Twitter, LinkedIn, and those are the key accounts that we've connected. Um, ours, I think we pay about 130 a month for our, the plan that we have. Um, we've definitely noticed an uptick in engagement with candidates, um, especially among those passive job seekers, you know, that um, was a definitely another goal of ours was to increase the traffic of candidates coming in through passive, um, passive means. So, I would say if you're out there, you're wanting to add, um, sorry, one of the questions is what is the tool? Hootsuite is the specific tool that we use, but I believe there's others out there. I think Hootsuite was just the, the most common one. Lisa, Lisa, when you say we, we use it, do you have like multiple members of your team with access and publish rights in it? Yeah, good question. So um, I was actually going to hit on that too. We we made the decision. So we've got a small team of recruiters. All of our recruiters here, there's uh, three of us. We all have 
the um, the access. But we actually extended it out to to a few other members of uh, our company. And I definitely recommend that, you know, especially if you have people that are really active on social media already, I'm sure everyone on this call can think of people in your company outside of TA that might be really active and have great networks. I would definitely recommend encouraging them if they're open to it because it, you know, we get busy, right? And it can help really manage and automate the posting that you want to do. So yeah, we do. We do expand it out of outside of TA. Who, who has published rights where they can kick it out publicly? So we have, uh, that's another tip that I have for folks is there's one, um, one individual that we nominated that really just owns this process. And so that's what I do recommend having one person to manage it and you know, I just voted that to not be me because I, um, you know, was running with a couple other things, but um, it's just a team member of ours. And so, yes, uh, he pushes out the content and um, that brings up the topic of, you know, balancing the quality versus the quantity, because I think, you know, we can all imagine being barraged with content. So we do have a publishing schedule that alternates with everybody throughout the week. I think we have like 15 people in the company. And so, is that, yes, one person. Is, is that publishing schedule inside of Hootsuite or is it managed outside of it? He does it inside, but then sends it to all of us in the company so that we know, I mean, it's pretty easy. And I know, you know, this might've been something good to show. And if anybody on the call wants to talk a little bit more about it, I'm happy to jump on and share some of the resources, but it's pretty easy, honestly. It's very user-friendly. I think one, one question, cause I, I have had an experience where uh, the, the levels of approval, right? If, if it's just the one person who hits publish, even though you're confident in that person, if they're also a creator of the content, they're just sort of rolling with it. We had a reposting of a Dilbert comment that if you looked at it from a different side, it made our CEO look really bad. Cause I can't remember mm -hmm. the Dilbert, the Dilbert CEO character, but he was sitting and uh, that lit up some fires. So is it, do you have like multiple levels of approval? Does it take more than one person to approve it before publish? We have um, actually a really good um, resource on our website of content and blogs. So we pull a lot of things off of there, but um, we do also have someone in our Chicago location that is our marketing SME, if you will. And so the recruiting teammate I'm referring to, he does, it's a really quick approval process, but yes, the, um, just one person in our case, we're a smaller firm. We're about a hundred people here in Chicago. So I think that's another good call. Sean is probably to have that content just, you know, to be careful and make sure, right. That yeah. it's coming off um, in the brand that you want to portray. I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Cause it ran smooth for a year. And then one day, uh Oh, <laughs> it's like somebody just didn't catch it. It was that one person. Yep. All right. Ex excellent. Does, uh, I, I'm sorry to cut or jump in there with some questions. Did you have some more? I mean, honestly, I think that's good. I just wanted to close with those key tips of, you know, if you are listening and you want to get started, but we talked about it, you know, just balancing the quality and the quantity, making sure you have a publishing schedule. I would add in there, make sure that, you know, you maybe take it through a chain of command to make sure it's approved content, um, maybe even running it through someone in marketing. Um, nominating that person and then definitely yeah just encourage employees to um, to participate as well yeah universal music we had a, a, uh, a team of one and it grew into a team of three to deal with our social media and you can assume like with all the artists that universal had access to content was easy to find but it had to be like staged and presented in a very tight way that either every music label is very I had a lot of ownership and pride in their, in their brand for that specific label. So it's quite the endeavor to get it right, get it approved, get the tools out. One of the uh, attendees, when I asked, hey, what are your recommendations for tools, uh, mentioned Airtable. I don't know if anybody's ever used Airtable, but we've, we use that quite often. You know, it was widespread. And if you've ever used that, it's like a spread online spreadsheet on steroids. So that's, it's a great tool out there. All right, did uh, Susan, Eric, Marvin, anybody else have anything to add into Hootsuite or kind of social media yeah, tools? Yeah, we've used it too. It's very easy to use, much like LinkedIn's Elevate. You know, you can post to multiple sites and it's pretty easy. And like Lisa said, you know, you can have your hiring 
managers or other people within the organization to help you out as well. So good tool. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's really basic, very simple to use, which is what you need, especially if you want to get like adoption onto it. I mean, it's simple is better <laughs> and it's, it's very easy to use. It's impactful, which is a win-win. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. Great, great tool. Um, I've worked in large enterprises. So like Sean is talking about, I have always had to deal with a lot of approvals before things go out, as you can appreciate it at Lockheed Martin or the Gates Foundation or here or before at Microsoft. So things were very, um, they were vetted very carefully. So you're fortunate to be in a small company. So <laughs> Lisa, there's a question around, does it provide analytics? Do you ever assume so? I just saw that come through. So that's um, one thing that is good to know in the free version. There is not analytics provided. So, you know, I think they're aware, right, that the analytics piece is key. So I do think that, you know, that's one thing to know going in is that the paid subscriptions do offer the analytics, but it's not included in the free option, which is unfortunately one of those maybe negatives about it is that you have to come up with some way to track the impact. You don't know off the top of your head the price, do you? I, I long forgot. So 130 a month is what we pay. And again, I think there's different levels and tiers. So I don't know that we have the most expensive one out there, but you know, 130 a month, a couple of our leaders, I know we're like, gosh, this seems like a no brainer for that cost, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, uh, Susan, we're gonna sort of jump over to you for your item. Okay, so I am Susan Ross out of Atlanta, Georgia, or actually Alpharetta, Georgia, and I run recruiting for New Relic globally. So I have about um, 12 recruiters and sourcers that report to me. I've um, started, like Lisa, an agency recruiting and then ran recruiting for um, Salesforce and then SAP and then um, most recently before New Relic DocuSign. So um, the two suggestions I have, we, um, I looked at it um, at DocuSign, but we didn't get to go live, but it's this technology called Gem. And it lays on top of LinkedIn and it's really great. I have always had a very strong direct sourcing model um, from the companies that I work for. And it allows you to you know, pull together a campaign to a candidate. So if you're looking at a passive candidate, like an enterprise sales candidate, they're usually getting hit up you know, every day, all day. Um, this will allow you to customize um, as many emails over a course of time. So unlike LinkedIn, where you send one email and you have to follow up and remember to follow up, this will actually allow you to do a campaign drop. Um, and it, the nice thing about it, it does provide all the analytics, how many people are opening it up, who's seeing it, you know, um, are they responding? Um, so it's great data to share with your hiring managers. But in a, a lot of instances, you can actually have your hiring manager, you as a recruiter could build the campaign for the hiring manager and send out the correspondence to those candidates based on the hiring manager and probably get a little bit better response rate, um, you know, coming directly from that hiring manager versus the source or the recruiter. So we've implemented it, the entire global team has access and it just saves a lot of man hours from a sourcing perspective because once you set it, you set it and forget it. Once that candidate does respond, yes or no, then it will stop the campaign to that individual. Um, but the other thing that I love about it, we have a role up in Canada and we're running a big direct sourcing campaign for this role. It's a leadership role for New Relic. And like we'll have our weekly cadence call with our hiring manager and we'll show, these are the candidates we've reached out to. These are the people that will respond you know, this is who said yes or no, this is who's, you know, um, not in play. Literally, you can run that report within seconds in Jim, whereas if oh. not, you'd have to be compiling that report yourself through LinkedIn. So, hey, Susan? Yep. Sorry to interrupt. Is it Jump or Gem? I think I said it was Gem. <laughs> Jim. It, it's my Southern accent. Sorry. <laughs> so, J-U-M-P? <laughs> G-E-M. Oh, Jim. Okay, I was right. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jim. I, I've, I've heard of that one. Go. Sorry. Um, it gets in the way sometimes. But it's a great, I mean, it's a, 
huge time savings. Um, and a lot of times, you know, a great candidate, a passive candidate, you know, once you've sent and you can customize it. So the first email is, hey, you know, candidate, you know, saw your background from Salesforce. You look very attractive to us for this role. So it's all customizable. And then each follow on email is customizable and it'll say happy Wednesday or happy Thursday. Um, and it will customize that email. And so that whole campaign goes out. You know, sometimes they respond on the second email. Sometimes they respond on the third. Some days, you know, they've had a bad day. The manager's being a jerk and they respond on the fifth email. But it at least campaigns to them. So in essence, you're setting up a sourcing channel, kind of set it and forget it um, versus having to do those each individually through LinkedIn. So we found it very, very um, uh, good from a productivity standpoint and from um, – just being able to hit that passive talent and get those responses that everybody wants. But does it integrate with LinkedIn? Yes. Hmm. Lays on top of LinkedIn. So do the messages go in like through LinkedIn messaging or in mail or how does that? No, it goes through Jim, um, but it, it, you have to have a LinkedIn profile for Jim to work. So it's integrated with Jim. So I'd that- be surprised if LinkedIn doesn't buy them at some point, but, <laughs> but it's really a great technology. And I was explaining it to a couple of my friends and they're like, oh my God, I have to have that. You know, I'm like, yeah, once you use it, you'll never go back. You'll want to have that for sure. I don't think it's, I mean, we've got a, a global license for all of New Relic, so I don't know the price tag there. But if you're just buying it individually for your own seat, I don't think the the price tag is extremely you know high like a LinkedIn recruiter license. It's a lot less than that. Marvin, were you going to say something? No, I w- I was what I was going to say is um, I'm not a customer, but I'm a fan. Um, I they put out probably the best information on how to run drip recruiting campaigns. They talk about the cadence. They give you data. It's just beautiful in terms of whoever writes for them is is brilliant, and uh, so check it out. It's it's really worth reading. So just it's good to hear it works. So yeah, it works really well. They've been really good as a vendor too. They're actually putting us. They have you know it's a SaaS model, so they have a new release and they've got new features and functionality. So that's just kind of a value add. Every quarter they come and train the entire recruiting team at New Relic, um, you know, on different things that they've got um, coming into the new release. So it's, and it's also good from, they got some diversity reports and, you know, all sorts of kind of things that um, as a leader of the recruiting group that you'd want to report on, so. Uh, could it be a uh, competitor to LinkedIn Recruiter? Um, it, it, it could be, but the, the, it lays on top of LinkedIn, so it really has to, and you have to have a LinkedIn profile for it to work. Do you think it works so well that LinkedIn may just decide to block it at some point That's, if they don't want to sell? <laughs> I would say buy it versus block right. it, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, me, me too. All right, uh, Lisa, Eric, or, or Susan, did, I, don't, I don't know if you said you had another item. Did you? I do. I have one more thing I wanted to share. Um, I have leveraged those two companies in a row. We use this technology called 360 Skill Survey, and it is a reference, um, you know, process. So at the end of our recruiting process, if I'm hiring you, Lisa, into a role here as a recruiter. Um, in our ATS, which is Jobvite, we launched this reference report, you know, from Jobvite. It creates a beautiful reference report on you. It gives me all sorts of analytics because it norms you, Lisa, against all other recruiters. So it gives me a norming score. But the beauty of it is from a sourcing perspective. So let's say your references opted in to learn more about New Relic. It literally sends that recruiter saying, Guess what? You know, your your candidates references have want to know more about New Relic and it literally creates a, a database of can, you know, potential candidates, silver medalists for New Relic. So we've had a I did it at DocuSign, my previous company, 
had a lot of success for it, went global with it, um, and we made a ton of hires from it. But we also, from a um, just a quality of hire standpoint, um, we stopped 12 hires with poor references over an 18-month period. So um, it really had a huge impact on the quality of people we were hiring, but also creating that evergreen funnel of candidates. Does it work where when they're getting the references, they can answer it via their phone and it's kind of like a multi-select list? Or how does it, it's how does actually it? a survey. So okay. if you are being, if you are a reference for Lisa, sorry, Lisa, I'm picking on you today. Um, oh, good. Uh, <laughs> but if you are a reference for her, it sends you a survey and the survey is specific to that role. So it would ask you questions about Lisa as a recruiter. And then once you know, the report completes, it shows you norming scores. So it'll say Lisa scored in the highest norming capability against all other recruiters. And then it comes with this beautiful report showing Lisa, you know, how is her, you know, attention to detail? How is her, you know, all these, you know, core competencies. We've customized it around um, New Relic's core competencies. So at the end of every survey, the references will ask, you know, be asked questions on a one to five scale on how they felt about Lisa as it compares to New Relic's core competencies, like being authentic, bold, connected. So it's very customizable, but it not only gives the manager, you know, a beautiful, slick, you know, report from a uh, reference standpoint, but as I hire Lisa onto my team, it allows me a lot of data to manage her, to make sure she's successful and make sure she's happy. So there's a lot of data there, but it also gives me Lisa's fit from a cultural perspective to New Relic because it's evaluating her on our core competencies. And then, you know, like I said before, if Lisa's references opt in, they're put into a database and that recruiter running point with Lisa is given all those leads um, as potential other hires for New Relic or whatever company. Again, brilliant technology. Um, I implemented it at DocuSign, tons of success there, and then we implemented and we integrated with our ATS here. I did not do that at um, DocuSign, but here we've integrated completely. So it's literally one click from the recruiter, the reference report's done, it goes to the hiring manager with all the norming scores and then the um, the references that opt in are given to that recruiter in an email. So it's very automated and it's just a pretty slick way to kind of get more leads, but also have that quality check. And, and that's called 360 skill survey. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Not trying to harp on your Southern accent again. <laughs> when I, I'm from Wisconsin. When I first moved out to California, I got made fun of quite a bit and everybody thought I was from Canada. I'm like, <laughs> Not even close. We don't even border Canada. No All right. Well, excellent, excellent items, uh, Susan. Appreciate that. Uh, sit. And Lisa, good luck in your job at Relic. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm very excited. <laughs> Just teasing. Let me know when I start. Okay. We'll do All right. It. Hey, uh, before we jump, or is everybody good? Any anybody have anything to add to, to Susan's option items? All right. Before I jump over to Eric, I am gonna practice my little poll and I'm going to ask about people's ATS and how they like it. This not go to the panels, but uh, let's go to the group. Cause that was one of the options that we had around on suggestions was like to have a, a good ATS. It's hard to find a good ATS. At least Susan, it sounds like you like job bite. We use job bite at, um, at universal used quite a few over the time, but it's always good to let other recruiters know when you find a good ATS. It's pretty good. We're, we are going through an RFP right now. So we oh, are, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, my, my review is we made it work when it came yeah. to, to job by specifically. There's some wants and wishes missing, but we can make it work. Yeah. All right, Eric, let's jump over to you and your item. Sure, um, well, thank you for having me, Sean. Um, so I am not a recruiter per se. Um, I am in recruiting operations, um, but I like to think I play a recruiter um, every day. Um, so I've been doing operations, HR operations, recruiting operations for about 22 years now. So I've seen all the different technologies, all the different ATSs and CRMs. 
um, what I call like the talent ecosystem. And um, in my latest role uh, at Viacom CBS, um, you know, we started getting into um, really trying to unbias job descriptions to try to cast like a wider net um, to one, get back, uh, you know, just a different you know, battery of candidates, um, applicants and candidates to attract to the company. Um, and then also we wanted to try to keep things as unbiased as possible, right? We were very, um, take a lot of pride in DNI um, as well as just attracting talent to the organization. So we um, embarked on leveraging a tool called Textio. Um, and what Textio does, um, it's, you know, I could throw out all AI, machine learning, all that, which it is, um, all those buzzwords and stuff like that. But what you really can think about it is, is it's going to take a job description that you have um, and take a look at, you know, words that may not resonate um, to certain demographics, right? It, it can take a job that, you know, looks way too masculine on paper and kind of give you pointers to, you know, normalize that. Um, and it kind of slices and dices and it's kind of continuously learning. Um, so really what you want to do um, with an application like this, right, is, is you're going to be working with your compensation team to kind of figure out, okay, well, what does a role look like? What are, you know, the grading structure of it? What is the, um, you know, the core competencies? Again, that partnership between compensation recruiting and business partners. And, you know, once you kind of distill that down um, into your job description, what we have the recruiters do as part of a mandatory step now is run it through Textio. Um, and I'm just going to give you some quick little stats here, right? So Textio scores a job description um, based on a score of zero to a hundred. Zero is really, really bad. Um, probably would not fare well on the market. Um, and then a hundred is, is pretty darn good. Um, and what it'll do is it'll take a look at kind of, you know, specific words, repetitive words, um, you know, stuff that's in the job description and start to evaluate it, right? So we injected that at the beginning of kind of like before the cycle even kicks off when the recruiters kind of, again, having that partnership, um, you know, with the appropriate people, we'll start putting it through um, Textio at that point, right? Um, and it will be scored. So initially when we first rolled this out um, and the tool is actually very, very easy to use, when we first started rolling it out, uh, it took about 30 to 60 minutes for a recruiter to really fine tune a job description. Um, when we started putting ours initially through, um, we were seeing scores of like 65, 70, somewhere around there, uh, which is still a pretty good uh, score. But, um, you know, we really have a mandate um, that we put in place where we want for a 90, which is pretty cool. So that was when it first started off, right? So now, um, as you kind of continuously go with Textio, you know, what we saw is two things. We saw um, the actual job descriptions that were getting cleaned up through Textio. One, they could be reused, bits and pieces of them. Um, so that obviously started to bring down the time to the fact that where we are now, which is about uh, 15 minutes and stuff like that to get the, the job description pristine. So that's added time to the recruiters. However, um, on the upside of that is what we've seen, um, and this is kind of over about the course of, let's say, six months, we've had a 28% um, increase in the number of applicants um, to, to the company. And we're kind of going through, obviously, you know, if you're keeping up with all the headlines, we're, we're you know, recently merged. That's predominantly on the Viacom um, side, legacy Viacom side. Now that we're kind of um, clubbing it all together, you know, we're going to look at that statistic again and see where we're at. Obviously, we're in different times right now, um, you know, with everything going on globally. Uh, but we look to, you know, have Textio as really um, a, a critical part of, of, you know, where we're heading. Um, you know, this type of technology gets really interesting. It is falling under um, scrutiny right now. So within Illinois, um, there's new legislation that was passed uh, that went into effect uh, January, where they're really taking a look at, um, you know, any type of AI that you're introducing within any type of any piece of the applicant to employee flow. So whether it's at, you know, in the beginning or at phone screen or interview, ver you know, visual interview, um, all that good stuff, it has to be all, um, uh, you know, taking a look at it and it has to be independently audited. So that's, that's a big thing that's going on right now. 
Um, and New York City is also kind of coming under um, that same exact scrutiny right now. So anytime when you go into this type of technology, um, I would always just caution people to just make sure, you know, whether it's Textio, Textio does do independent auditing, which is great. Um, it's a fantastic company. I don't get paid for them at all. Um, but I can say that, you know, they are really um, making sure that they're compliant um, with all these new regs as they're emerging. So, you know, the real, the real winning story here is, you know, we have recruiters that are now um, being able to kind of um, compartmentalize these, these job descriptions. Um, it's getting a lot faster, um, you know, to, to kind of create those job descriptions, which is another good thing. We're getting a lot of diverse applicants coming back. So, um, for example, I have another stat here. In technology, you know, traditionally, you know, right, wrong, whatever, um, you know, people, male identified talent typically is, is, you know, predominant in that field. We actually saw um, close to about an 11, 12 percent increase in um, people that identify as female uh, applying to roles, which is huge. Um, you're getting diversity and, you know, thought diversity coming into the company, um, as well as just diverse candidates, which is a real, um, real win there. And a lot of this is attributable to, you know, just recruiters leveraging this tool. Um, it's really definitely working for them. It's, it's easy to use. Um, and the other thing too, is it's very gamified. So, um, you know, we give out kind of like little awards. It's just to make it like a little fun. Um, it's definitely an easy application to use, but there's definitely um, there's definitely a gamification aspect to it. One thing it does, though, that sometimes will annoy people is it's constantly learning. Um, that's what machine learning obviously is all about. So I can have a job score, a job description of, let's just say, a 95 uh, at the end of this week. And then next week, it's like at an 80. What happened? Well, what's happening is, is it's comparing my job description. Let's just say it's a, a digital animator, right, for, for one of the studios. It will literally go out to the market for everybody that's leveraging Textio um, and take a look at all the jobs. So it's actually comparing it to, I don't even know how many um, hundreds of thousands of jobs, but um, I don't have that stat, but a lot. <laughs> it's, it's, it's comparing it to a lot. So what may be a good job description and a solid job description, you know, one day, once you revisit it again, um, it may have actually dipped a little bit in score. Um, and that's a good thing. It's keeping everybody kind of cognizant of, you know, what it's going to take to attract the right talent um, as we evolve. And, and, you know, in this industry, it's, it's evolving rapidly. So Textio is definitely um, a good tool to have. I mean, I, I can't say enough good stuff about it. Yeah, I've used it briefly in the past, and we did. Uh, we had a sourcer that had it was sort of an evangelist for them. I, th I think it was so she had like a license to it. So we were, she was running, doing some work just on her piece of it, and we were able to kind of compare a textual job description versus a non-textual job description. Yeah, it's wild. You could, you could see the differences in the applicant flow. Even they're yeah. the same type of talent, so it wasn't like oh, it's an engineer over here and uh, a coordinator over there. We sort of yeah. ran that. Uh, sort of the apples to apples to piece of it. Uh, I didn't know that we were starting to get the government or compliance involved. As, as we all know, things get yeah. better when the government's involved. But Yeah, so um, it's actually a good thing, right? So AI um, is really, uh, we use another tool called Pymetrics, which is behavioral-based gamification, which is also another really cool tool that's in a very small subset of the, the business. Um, but yeah, AI, um, there is the Illinois Artificial Intelligence Interview Video Act, very lengthy um, in, in what it is. But basically, it, it's, you know, the long and short of it is that, you know, you're not going to be able to bias um, candidates through a tool that you're using that's not going checked by, you know, an independent auditor. Um, so, and especially from a behavioral based, uh, you know, interview piece, when that's when you're literally you could potentially be knocking out candidates. And this is not Textio, but this is, you know, other, other tools that are out there. Um, the government is really now starting to take this pretty seriously because I, I think AI, you know, machine learning was kind of like a thing and there was like a lot of fear for it. You know, it's like that Terminator. It's like, you know, pe robots will start taking over the world, right? Um, but I think now it's becoming more real um, and there definitely want to be regulations on it to make sure that, you know, people aren't unfair, you know, unfairly being um biased out of a job based on their reactions to a to a tool so yeah it's, it's interesting it's, it's definitely a um 
rapidly evolving space within uh, within HR in general, and then obviously within TA. Yeah, we're, we're going to ask. Do you, do you know <clears throat> the, the cost of Textio? I can't remember the exact cost, but I do so, think it was kind of pricey. Yeah, Textio is um, it's based on the volume that you're you're putting out. Um, you know, so it will range. I will say, like, if you're putting out, let's just say, if you're putting out upwards of maybe about. 200, 300 recs um, a year, you're probably in like the 10K range, 15K range. If you're doing something like in the, about a thousand or so, like it'll scale, it, it, they'll work with you to, to kind of scale the price. Um, most of the contracts that I've seen are around the 50K mark um, per year. And that's for, like I said, about a thousand recs that you're, you're putting out. Unlimited seats though, right? Mm -hmm. so I can roll this out to everybody, you know, under the sun. It's only when you start posting out Textio will um, start charging you, but I think their model, in all honesty, will start to change and evolve. Um, you know, as as that whole industry really starts to take form. Yeah, I think the price I I got was forty thousand. That that kind of yeah. put us out of a budget at the time, but it's a great tool. I highly recommend. It. I wish we could have had it. Yeah, it's it's definitely. I mean, like I said, it's I've seen nothing but you know great results from it. Um, from just the 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 number of applicants, it's not just about volume, but it's also about quality. We've seen quality go up as well. I mean, there's really no downside um, that we've seen. Excellent. All right, uh, we're hitting that time, Mark. I, I, we typically run a little bit long. I don't wanna go past too long, but so uh, thanks for that, Eric. Hey, Mar Marvin, I'm gonna jump over to you and I'm gonna, I grabbed one of your old blog posts. I think it was from 18 maybe. You had a compiled list of tools. I'm gonna put that in the chat group. Let's sort of jump it over to you. Thanks. Um, I sit on a central sourcing team at Lockheed Martin. Uh, been here about seven and a half years. Uh, initially, I was involved with inbound recruiting technology. So uh, at that point, we had Smashfly, and and you know we're looking at different ways to automate things. Uh, I worked on talent communities. I mean, real talent communities, not the network things. And, and now I've shifted to outbound recruiting and I'm looking primarily at talent engagement. So a uh, big fan of what Susan was talking about in terms of uh, driving engagement. A uh, um, couple things. One is drip recruiting really works. So if you can, you can look at the, um, the different platforms that are available. Um, LinkedIn's a little limited, LinkedIn Recruiter with the in-mail because you can only do one in-mail a month. Hey, hey Marvin, huh? can you elaborate on what you mean by drip recruiting? So iteratively emailing a person. So what we do is we design four emails and they tell a story. And so it's not a repeating of the same, same, it's, it's, it's all about, you know, say we want to talk about, you know, it's a time to think about your career and we pose questions and try to engage people with relatively short, but succinct kinds of messages about them and not about us. Um, our click to, uh, our CTA, our click through for the, the messages are a, an opportunity interview with one of our talent sourcers. Um, these are people that are, their target audiences are people that are critical to us short and long term. So we're building pipelines out of those. And um, so we want to stay with these people, not just for a campaign, but for a long term type of engagement. So we're going to run a campaign with three or four emails if they don't respond to that outreach, then we'll put them into a long-term nurture project, which means they'll get career-related or profession-related content on kind of a monthly basis. That's our experiment. So um, I think in, in the environment we're in, uh, it's a great time to build relationships with people. Uh, you can do things like ask if you can provide assistance to people they know that have been impacted and, you know, kind of be that, that positive force out there, like you guys are doing with, you know, some of the different uh, uh, 
you know, helping people along. There's a lot of tools that are available free now to try. And uh, if you have time to do it. <laughs> so um, so the, the drip campaign is a pre-planned iterative engagement. Jim sets a cadence uh, that I'm sure Susan uses and they have some recommendations around that. And that's what I was really impressed with, with their writing as they talk about how to do that. So let me cut to the chase. The tool I want to talk about is Humantic. Has anybody heard of Humantic? It's, uh, it's a tool that based on somebody's LinkedIn profile, they're going to tell you the best way to communicate with that. And it's based on the disc, D-I-S-C. Crystal knows is a, a competitor that's been out there in the market previously. Um, and so what I'm doing right now is comparing, we, we have really good success because we have a big brand in our email campaigns, but I'm going to tr design a test in which I'll compare Humantic and approaching it from a person's disc and design the communications around the way the person in that category would best like to receive messaging and see if it makes a difference. Um, and it's a very reasonable tool. Um, and I'm excited about it just to see if it, if it can move the needle like Textio does in uh, making us better at uh, making a generic type of, bringing some sizzle to a generic type of approach to it. I think the more we can personalize what we're doing with someone will make more sense. So. That's really why I'm thinking of or doing that right now. So, Marvin, how do you spell that? I'm having a problem finding it. H U M A N T I C, like human, human with an antic on it. Dot A I, I believe. That work? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, they got to learn a whole new language these days with all these web web domains. Yeah, they're either A I or. IOs. IO.co <laughs> now, all kinds. What happened yeah. to the .nets when everybody would yeah. go to that? Interesting. So that's more getting back to kind of where Eric was with the, with the AI piece of it. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned yeah, Chris. too, on Eric's comment on Textio, you could use this in your campaigns in Jim. You could use Textio along what you want to say you know, email wise through Textio, make sure it's favorable from a diversity standpoint and, you know, just the tones standpoint and then leverage it in your campaign at Jim. So. Yeah. I, I started a quick little poll again about, uh, does your company have a CRM or use a CRM type capabilities in your ATS? Uh, Marvin, to your point, this long play outreach and Susan, just w with your item too is, a lot of this activity is happening outside of an ATS, right? This is pre-applicant. So, right. you know, Eric, to your point about the government, well, as soon as they're an applicant, you got all these laws that go in there. So I'd rather keep them as a, as a contact somewhere Absolutely. outside of it. So I was asking if somebody has a CRM. I, I come from a world of CRMs. I, I love CRMs. I think, Marvin, that's how I got to know you quite some time ago around your right. communities and pipelining. But being able to have a, a system outside of an applicant tracking system to really do targeted recruiting in companies is it's few and far between, but it's, I, I don't know how you do it as a large size company that wants to stay around for more than three years, not have that type of a type of tool to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. That's actually my favorite part of, of TA It's a good CRM because that, that passive talent, um, especially now, you know, given the, the circumstances where you may have a little bit more bandwidth where you can start figuring out you know, how you're going to want to start setting up campaigns for after this, and, you know, start cycling through some of your passive you know, talent pools right now. It's, it's so critical. Yeah. I'm I, an exercise right now on bringing one up. <laughs> that's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. You know what it is? It's, it's, the, it's creating the taxonomy that we want to tag everybody. Like it's just, it's all over the place right now with the two companies. So it's kind of, it's a fun exercise to kind of corral everybody together to really make sure that, um, you know, it's, it's going to add value. Um, and then we're going to be able to actually extract the right people out um, properly from, from it. But it's a fun one. The, uh, there's some, I don't know where people are aware of it or not, but there's a free CRM out there 
that's kind of geared toward the recruiting industry, and that's with a company called Candidate ID, and it's it's free and it it's pretty robust. So for the smaller organizations that don't have a budget, it's priced right. It, Marvin, let me throw this at you around the smaller smaller CRMs, price is right. What do you think about because recruiters? You know, they travel to different companies, maybe more so than others. Having your own personal CRM, your digital Rolodex, so to speak, that, hey, whether or not your company has one or not, if they don't, I'm going to have my own. So when I go on to the, the next job or two years later at the same company, different rec, if my company's not going to provide that, I'm going to provide it for myself. In the early part of this century, I, I should stipulate I've been around a long time in this in this world. But in the early part of this century, I used a tool called PC Recruiter, and I was a serial contract recruiter, and so I went from place to place, and I carried that. I mean, that was my, my I invested in it and, and even used it a bit at Microsoft, so uh, when I was a contractor before we went full-time there. But it's, um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, it's, it's your inventory of talent, and... Uh, if you spend a lot of time developing it and, and uh, if you're doing gigs or freelancing, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, the, the one item that I was going to throw in for the topic of the day was the tool that I've been using like on a daily basis for quite a few months now is Zap Info. And mm-hmm. what that does is allow you to grab data, go up in the Zap, and then kind of put it wherever you want. So it's kind of like a, a connector into my CRM. That's what I, I use it for, but I like it because I can just grab information. It'll do some updating price. The price is right for my, my pocketbook. I use a personal account for it, but I use that info because I can take data and take it from one place and put it into another, regardless of uh, the systems, basically. All right. We are at the 45 minute mark. Uh, good conversation that kept going. I don't think we lost any of the attendees. I always sort of keep an eye on we losing people, but we are not losing anybody. So conversation is going really well. Does anybody have any sort of final comments or, or thoughts? On Zap Info, um, I, I also am a big fan. Um, one of the things on Zap Info that you can do is you can run a drip recruiting campaign. You can identify the email addresses, uh, verify whether or not that's a working email, and then bring it in and use it within SAP Info. Or in their case, we can export that directly into our CRM, which is Aperture, and you know go on from there. So it's a really nice tool. So I have to have to applaud you on that. That's uh, that's I I use that daily. Yeah, I will. Uh, like. Uh... A lot of the suggestions around good tools to have that came from the attendees was LinkedIn Recruiter, right? Which is it's a great tool. It's the number one source. I implore everybody to really get a grasp of the project folders. I love using project folders in LinkedIn. But kind of Marvin, to your point, that's what I do in, in LinkedIn is I, I use my project folders. And if I need to grab them out of there to go do something else with it, enter Zap, right? And yeah. you can be on a page in LinkedIn, that's your 25 profiles, uh, grab them, go where you want to go with them where you need to. It's another one of those tools where, hey, this looks works really good with LinkedIn. I hope they don't kill it. <laughs> um, it's so far yes. so good. You know, uh, the more we talk about that feature, but it, but it's one of the few tools that will will uh, go into a LinkedIn recruiter folder and parse the data. So, yeah, I'm always I had some some conversations with, with with Doug and Eric up there, and they're talking about how many you can do at one time. Like, oh, hold on, I don't want to. I don't want to do too many because I've been in the LinkedIn jail before and I just sort of want to do patience and persistence before flags go up and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a very powerful tool. It's, it's, it's I highly recommend it to, to everybody. All right. Anything else? Otherwise we'll kind of call it a day. Thank you, Sean. My Thank pleasure. you very much, Sean. This yeah. is great. Yeah, Thank you very much. Yeah, great conversation. Thanks. Hey, Marvin, thanks for jumping in at the yeah. last minute. I appreciate that very much. So have, a, have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome. Good day. Have a good week, everybody. Uh, I'll post this up on LinkedIn. I'll record it, and then I'll, I'll send out the link so everybody has that also. Fantastic. All right. Great. We'll see everybody Bye. soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.